This week on Rams 360. Week four in the National Football League brings us to Indianapolis in Lucas Oil Stadium. Gun run, handoff, Kyron Williams back in Indiana and back in the end zone. Go, go. I thought we played critical down football, um, critical execution at the moments that we had to have it the most. Overtime. Looking down the middle going, man, I'm not seeing somebody in there. Threw it a little bit high. All this and more on Rams 360. Week four in the National Football League brings us to Indianapolis in Lucas Oil Stadium. Go, fellas. Let's have a day. This is the quintessential can't lose game. Too early on the first day of October to call it a must win, but the Rams coming home to face the reigning NFC champion Eagles would be an uphill climb to be certain. Go do it, boy. Go play ball, man. Doing this since we were five years old. I heard some great stuff down here. Let your inner dialogue take over, then go play football. The Rams and the Colts set to kick off week four from Indianapolis. All us, all we need. Rams on three, one, two, three. Rams. Stafford in the shotgun for the first snap of the game. Top of his drop, throws middle. It is bobbled and caught. Stabbed by Puka Nakua. 26 yards on the first strike of week four. Puka. Now the Rams on the ball, short field, shotgun snap, gun run, handoff, Kyron Williams back in Indiana and back in the end zone. Yo, yo. The former Notre Dame fighting Irish tailback finds pay dirt here on the opening drive in Indianapolis. Hey, let's go to work, Big O. Let's go to for the jump, my man. I thought Van Jefferson's fourth down catch earlier in the game was huge. Matthew Stafford hearing it now from the home crowd. Fourth and a short three. Stafford surveys, fires middle, caught! A tough, contested catch to move the chains. That was money. What a big time throw and catch. A fourth down and three that enabled us to be able to get our second touchdown of the first half. Back to Kyron, straight ahead, picking his way through traffic, and he spikes another touchdown. Back-to-back -back red zone trips finished with physical touchdowns. Shine really bright. I thought the turnover that Jordan Fuller forced earlier in the game was a huge play. Richardson to the right side. Takes a leap at the 40, fumble. They've recovered. The Rams' first fumble recovery of 2023. Our defense is playing great, so with the shutout in the first half, trying to make sure we're playing complimentary football, but uh, just one play at a time, right? That's the thing that we continue to harp and uh, hear on the sideline is one play at a time. Stafford, blitz picked up. He wings one down the right seam. Caught at the 30, Tyler Higby down to the 15-yard line. Matthew Stafford with the throw that was trailing smoke. 51 yards on the way, plenty of leg, and it is good. From 51 to push the lead to 23-0 Los Angeles. Coming up next on Rams 360. We got a tension convention here at Lucas Oil Stadium. Walk-off touchdown is what the Rams are looking for here. He's under center. Play fake, pressure early. Throw goes in the dirt right side as Stafford is put on his back. As I'm watching Stafford walk, he has a pretty big limp with him. Oh, he's hurting big time on that right hip. I knew it was just going to be one of those things that was pain slash function. As long as I could keep it warm on the sideline and keep the function going, I was, you know, going to try to stay in there. So he's been favoring a hip injury, but playing through as he so often does. That's the NFL. Just everything's hard. It's hard to win in the NFL, especially on the road. Play face rolls to his right. Hit from behind. It's the greatest to ever do it sack for AD 99 and the first he's ever had against the Colts. Can't say enough about the guts, the resilience, the mental toughness of this group. Fourth quarter clock, Rams on defense with the lead. 
Richardson back to throw. Finds a target, lets it go. Left side, back shoulder. Incomplete. Quinton Lake, the safety, broke it up. Richardson sets his feet, fires right side. Leaping catch interrupted by Witherspoon. And he was hit by the Rams corner. It's fourth down and four. The way that that game ended up going down and the way they got back into it, um, you know, our mindset and mentality was be aggressive. In the shotgun, Richardson calls for the snap. Looks right, now takes off, dashes through the right side, whirls with a spike in the end zone. And now this is dicey. The Rams got the first 23 points, but Anthony Richardson has got the Colts on the doorstep. Looking for a tying touchdown and two-point conversion. To the end zone, touchdown, Colts. They have to get this to tie the game at 23. It's the quarterback keeper out to Pittman on the throw. He catches it, and we're tied. 23 unanswered points for the Indianapolis Colts. Coming on the road, starting the way we started, and having it, uh, you know, finish the way we finished there um, in regulation was tough, and, and guys just never flinched. Snap the knee, overtime between the Colts and the Rams in week four. What a contest. The Rams led by 23 points midway through the third quarter. It's been all Colts since. We're looking to Matthew Staff. Let it work, not. Nah. Okay. He's got 42 career game-winning drives to go make this right in the end. You know, really thought we had a chance to win it. We were ready to go march down there. Just proud of the effort that you guys had today. Hey, let's go. Speed Offense, time to go down here and score a touchdown. Go down and end this thing. Can't say enough about Matthew Stafford. The guts, the resilience, the mental and physical toughness. And you could see that he was limited, but I mean, just making play after play. We put the game in his hands. Um, and he delivered in a big way with a vintage performance. We got a tension convention here at Lucas Oil Stadium. Matthew Stafford will get a chance for a game-winning drive. Cougarette steps away from pressure, resets, hitches, checks it down. Middle of the field, the back makes the catch. Stafford exhausted that progression. Matthew Stafford, what a gutsy performance in the second half. You can tell he's banged up, still trying to make it happen. Matthew Stafford is just the ultimate competitor. Hands down. The like, guy just wants to be out there. He wants to play. He wants to win. You, you absolutely love that. You're good, Matthew. When you've got a guy like him at the switch, you know you're always in a game. He just responds, whether it was a great play before, whether it was a challenging one. He keeps competing. He is able to be able to reload and reset every single snap. I mean, he's an igniter that elevates everybody around him. Walk-off touchdown is what the Rams are looking for. He's looking to walk out of Indianapolis with a victory. He throws right side alone. It's Puka at the five to the Dang. end zone. A walk-off winner. Puka Nakua in overtime. And Stafford takes his offense down the field to win it. Nakua Matata. It means no worries for the rest of today. Shout out Indy, people for coming out. Back to LA with a dub, baby. Let's go Rams. It's a problem-free Rams victory. 29-23 in OT. That is, uh, that is an incredible testament to resilience. Yes, sir. Right? When you have that kind of lead and you guys just say, let's just stay in the fight, man. Let's just stay in the fight. Let's keep believing. Let's be present. You guys did that. Good Man, what an amazing amount of lessons we've learned in the first month. And especially in that game yesterday where I was really proud of the way we came out. And then, you know, for us to relinquish that lead, for them to come back and tie it up, you know, you give them credit. But I think a lot of teams would have folded in that situation.
Hope you're having a great week, everyone. Thank you for spending part of it with us. Welcome to the Coach McVay Show presented by Microsoft Surface. J.B. Long, DeMarco Farr, and the head coach of your 2-2 two two Los Angeles Rams, Sean McVay, on a victory Monday. Always good to spend them with you. Yes, it is. Especially the overtime versions. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, we could have used without that, but it's amazing, J.B. and DeMarco. We were talking about it as a team, and you know, especially with so many young guys. Man, what an amazing amount of lessons we've learned in the first month, and especially in that game yesterday where – I was really proud of the way we came out. And then, you know, for us to relinquish that lead, for them to come back and tie it up, you know, you give them credit, but I think a lot of teams would have folded in that situation. And I thought we played critical down football, um, critical execution at the moments that we had to have it the most, whether that was the defense getting the stop when they got the ball back with about a minute 40 left, you know, the second down tip by Hoyt, uh, Quentin Lake making the breakup when we rushed five in the fire zone to then be able to earn an opportunity to go into overtime and, Benny Sko with the tails call was yeah. big right there to be able to win the, uh, you know, to be able to win that so that we could end up getting the ball. And then obviously Matthew went Matthew um, in that drive. I thought the line, I thought we were to mix in a couple runs and then to be able to close it out hitting Puka was big, but man, what a, what an amazing amount of things you can learn from. And it sure is easier to take that in stride after you get the results you want, but you know, we're still hunting up, you know, continuing to put together a full four quarters and, that's what you know is challenging about this league. It's also why you love it. We we got text messages, emails. You guys should be happy, right? It's happy. That was a great game. You won an overtime. And let me ask the coach. I mean, I'm sure you're happy you won, but do you feel like it shouldn't have gotten to overtime? Now, you know what? I don't want to minimize the yeah. job that Indianapolis yeah. did to Marco. You know as well as anybody how difficult mm -hmm. it is. And there's no style points in this league. And mm -hmm. so um, however you get it done, I think we can learn a lot more for the way that it went down. Now, do I wish that it had gone down differently based on some of the things that we can control? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do I think that from the way that it went down, we can take a lot more from it and we can grow more as a team? I, I genuinely do. And so... That's all we can do is is learn from the previous things, whether it be good, bad, or things we can improve on. And that's coaches and players alike. Um, that's what we did today. And then, uh, you know, we'll shift and pivot our focus towards uh, an excellent team coming in here next Sunday, and let's roll. Let's bask in that game-winning drive a little bit. And uh, my broadcast partner, Maurice Jones-Drew, pointed out that it felt a lot like the opening touchdown drive yep. of the game. Did you kind of go back to where you started in your game plan with the uh, the throw to Puka and then chipping away with your running backs? We were able to. You know, the the first play of the game was off of a drop back, but, you know, there were some similar things that we were hunting up. And, you know, it was a great job by the offensive line. To be able to go longer developing play action on the first play of that overtime drive and to get 20 was big, JB. And then I thought one of the unsung plays was on the second down and eight that we had a couple plays later where Matthew moves in the pocket. The line is just straining a little bit more and he finds Kyron for a check down to get us to a first down. That was so big. Um, I thought we had a couple big runs that we were able to mix in there. And then ultimately the third and four, um, you know, good pickup by our guys. Great job by Matthew being able to find it. But it was uh, that check down. He had two check downs to Kyron that were big on that drive. And um, but but that was uh, it, it, we did kind of go back to some things that we were doing early on and we could operate that way. You know, I, I'm a big butt and gut guy, the old line. I mean, a reconfigured old line. And yeah. man, does Kevin Dodson make your line look huge. He does. A and I thought he brought a sense of physicality. I thought he showed even uh, some really good athleticism on some second level blocks when we were running some perimeter type plays. Um, but he and Rob Havenstein had some really nice, you know, double teams at the point of contact. Um, I thought we were able to, you know, kind of stretch them horizontally, attack them vertically. I thought there was a good mixture and I thought our guys executed at a high level. Um, but you're right. It you know, I was really pleased with Kevin Dotson. And I was also really pleased with Joe Noteboom's ability to, hey, I'm starting at guard. Now I pivot back out to the left tackle spot. He battled, he strained. I thought Coleman and, and Rob were excellent. And, and Steve Avila, you know, continues to really produce at a very mature, consistent level for a rookie. So I thought those five guys were key and critical. Let me go back to those checkdowns because maybe the story of week two and three was like the disconnect in the passing game between Matthew and Kyron. Sure. So I love to see the individual progress leading to team results, right? It's a, it's a great point, JB. And, and I thought, you know, especially just Kyron, just looking it in, you know, doing the things he's capable of. He's such a talented football player, but sometimes it's like, hey, you know, you're playing so fast that, you know, you're not, you're taking for granted. All right, looking the ball all the way in and then getting vertical after the catch. But I thought that was a great reflection and illustration 
question of, hey, they had it pretty covered. He ended up sliding in the pocket. They had good kind of nonverbal communication. He just slid. Matthew changes his arm slot and is able to hit him for the first of two checkdowns that he hit him on that drive. And those were big to be able to stay ahead of the sticks and only have the one third down, which was the third down and four in the high red. And then obviously we get the touchdown there. I thought both backs were good. They were Ron awesome. Rivers, Kyber, they were both great, making nice cuts, setting up their blocks. They were. I, I, I think it's well said, and I think it's the truth. And I was really pleased. And Ronnie had a couple productive runs that ended up getting called back. Um, but I was really pleased with him. You know, he played, you know, a little under 25 snaps. And I think that was good to be able to get him in there. Kyron had another heavy workload. But I think those two supplementing one another is, uh, you know, is a really good combination. How about that game winner? And I know Kyron picked up, you wow. know, made that rush or disappear, but uh, you get a coverage bus, you take advantage, you walk off winners. Yeah, no, they, you know, you could see they were in a fire zone. They tried to communicate it a little something late, um, you know, with the stack and the and the release pattern that we gave. They both ended up jumping Hopkins and, uh, you know, we did a good job of being able to get it, recognize and identify the five rushers. Uh, Kyron ended up taking speed coming off the edge and then you could see, you know, Matthew ended up, you know, kind of putting it in a place where it was only Pukas and then for him to be able to finish that was big and, uh, there was a lot of excitement right there. That's the only player that, that I have an eight-year-old that her third grade classmates, they, they love Puka. Everybody. They, you everybody know, loves Puka. They, they yeah. do. <laughs> you know, Raheem Morris's son, Jalen, he he loves him. I mean, he goes crazy. And I mean, how do you know? I, I love Puka too. You <laughs> Big know? time. I mean, so. he, phenomenal player. I love the yeah. way he blocks. I mean, he's he's involved in every single part of the offense. Uh, I think you said, was it champagne problems? Did we say that? First world we, problems? We did. You know, you got, champagne problems. Yeah. And, you know, because getting, you know, hopefully the goal is to be able to get Cooper back. You know, yeah. let's let, before we put the cart before the horse, let's get him practicing. But, you know, hopefully we're able to have him. And, man, you had another really good playmaker. Um, you know, and I think Cooper's done such a good job of mentoring Puka. Uh, even though he hasn't been playing through this first month, you know, they, I, I know you, I mean, how do you not love the human being Puka Nakua is too with the humility, um, the respect he has for his teammates for this game. And then just the way that he goes and competes. I mean, he's just checking a lot of boxes and he's just stayed the same. He has fun. He loves competing. You know, he loves that. He loves Cooper cup. He loves his teammates. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him, but, but we are excited to get Cooper cup back on the grass with us. That's a big boost. And, I know I'm very happy about that as well. I'm definitely coming back to that. But first, two rookie mistakes from Puka. First, you throw your first NFL touchdown into the second down. <laughs> Are the Rams getting that ball back? That's a good question. You know, I, 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 would, I he, you have to ask him about that. <laughs> Somebody's got a good souvenir, though. You got to respect him on the double pass now that we've oh, seen his arm, though. And then the other one is he left you hanging in the locker room with the game ball. You he, were searching for him. I know. Play some home games. Let's get back Let's get to on. SoFi Stadium. A three-game set begins in week five against the Philadelphia Eagles. Sean, thank you for your time Thanks, on this guys. Monday. Have a good week ahead. DeMarco, JB Long. This, the Coach McVay Show, as always, presented by Microsoft Surface. Yeah. Coming up next on Rams 360. takes hard work. 581 days since that game. That's 4,648 hours of sleep. 82 weeks of rehab. 2,296 hours of work. Pain, progress, commitment. When you take a look back at your life, at your career, which numbers truly matter? The Los Angeles Rams select 199. The number I was drafted. The number I had to prove wrong. Monday Night Football, week 11. Two picks against another great. Another 199. His second of the game. I want to draft 199 too. Don't forget that. 
185 total career tackles, four interceptions, 71 assists. The numbers begin to add up, and every one of them counts. Recovery is a numbers game. Work, sleep, recovery. I would say that's definitely one of the biggest moments of my life as far as just made me figure out who I was. Kind of stripped me of that football identity for a little bit where, you know, we have so much built into that. Numbers make the difference, make them count. Sleep next level, perform next level. Coming up next on Rams 360. Stay tuned for more Rams 360. I've had enough extra football at that point, you know? I'm like, let's go put this thing in. I imagine Puka will be the first option for Matthew Stafford. Third down and four. Stafford throws. There he is. Nakua to the end zone. Rams win. Puka Nakua with his ninth catch of the game, his first NFL touchdown. It comes in overtime. Looking down the middle going, man, I'm not seeing somebody in there. Threw it a little bit high, just thinking that there was somebody standing there and there wasn't. The Kua, who had a huge day. Nine receptions, 163 yards, and his first NFL touchdown. Matthew put it in a spot, uh, you know, for Puka to be able to make another big time play. He was a man today, and he's been a man throughout the first three weeks. He is something special. Happy that he made the play and then got it in so we didn't have to keep going. Exactly how we drew it up. Golly. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week for more Rams 360. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our videos.